Now how could I present a video on the Anunnaki and not throw in a video on one of my all-time favorite subjects, giants. So what I want to do is I want to talk about a story that is more recent. And many of you may already know this story about the Kandahar giant. Of course, you haven't heard it from me. One thing we have to keep in mind is that this is a pretty big planet. There's a lot on it. You haven't seen it all. None of us have. Who knows what lurks in the deep, in the earth? How important would survival be to a being like that? If you trust in the word that there were giants in the days of Noah, before the great delusion, then after that, then, then at what point were they completely wiped out? Here's a scary question. At what point does the offspring of a giant come out to look just like you and me? Well, we are going to get into this for a moment because I really want to explore this fascinating story of the giant of Kandahar. The city of Kandahar, Afghanistan, it has a population of about 550,000 people. It is the capital of the Kandahar province located south on the Argandab River. The city became the capital of the Afghan empire in 1747 and has been the region's cultural center since. Now the region of Kandahar is considered to be one of the oldest human settlements. We're talking 1,000 to 750 BCE, probably another 700 years after the Sumerian civilization. Since the late 70s, the region has become a hotspot for groups such as Qaeda Shura and of course Al Qaeda, and became the capital for the Taliban government, which was then overthrown by US and NATO forces in late 2001 with Ahmed Karzai leading as president. This region has seen a lot of war and it has been overthrown and renamed several times by several warlords. So this story takes place in 2002, where a special forces team was called into a very remote area of Kandahar. The reason they were called in was because the original patrol unit had gone missing. And of course, this team was sent in to investigate. After flying in, they hiked four kilometers along a path down the side of a hill where there was an opening to a cave. There was no sign of the unit, just some rocks and debris of bones and some equipment, which looked like they may have been human remains. Now, the team is on high alert in case of ambush or animal attack, and without warning, from the mouth of the cave, it emerged. A man, 12 to 15 feet in height, approximately 1,100 pounds, long scarlet red hair, red beard, and six digits on his hands and feet, which had not really nails, but claws. Immediately, one of the soldiers fires upon him, and the rest of the team engages. Within seconds, the giant lunges at one of the soldiers, impaling him with what apparently was some sort of spear. The giant, with the soldier still on his spear, attempts to attack the remaining soldiers. All the remaining team members fire upon the monster, killing it. Two helicopters arrive to evacuate the team and lift out the strange cargo. After that, it was standard order of procedure, I guess, and the team was ordered to rewrite the reports with disclosure agreements. They were ordered to keep their mouths shut, of course. Now, this story has been covered by author Steve Quayle and researcher Elia Marzulli, where you can get greater details on the event. So, let's talk about this giant for a moment. 15 feet, red hair, six digits on its hands and feet strong, fast, powerful. 
If we follow the biblical narrative, then we would probably consider this being to be either one, a descendant of some bloodline leading back to the ancient antediluvian giants, or a descendant of giant dating back to the post-flood era. I don't think that humans have bred any giants, and I don't think this would be the result of human mutation. This giant having red hair is not really significant, the reason being part of the giant genetic makeup would be that of a human. Some humans also have red hair. They're not all giants. Even though red hair does run in some families, I could go through a whole list of kings and giants and gods and goddesses that all have red hair and you wouldn't be able to make sense of it. You just wouldn't because it is not a defining characteristic. Do you understand? So trying to figure out why this giant has red hair doesn't mean that all the other giants are going to have the same characteristics. There are a lot of details missing from the description of this creature. But you know what? If I heard through the grapevine that a fellow soldier killed would appear to be a giant with whatever colored hair, I'm going to believe him. Yep, caves of Afghanistan? That sounds about right. And I'll be looking out for giants the whole time. You could call me Jack. Are there giants in those caves? Sure. I'm never going to find out because I'm never going there. Now, this Kandahar giant was a man-eater. Very brutal, very fast, and very stupid. I think giants would have figured out how to use guns by now. But who knows what the education system is like underground. I guess one of them finally flipped out from being underground so long he lost his mind. We don't really know what the motives of this giant were. The stories of giants, red-haired giants roaming the country of the Americas before native settlements. Yes, that sounds about right. I also know about the stories of underground chambers known to and some built by the government to allow these beings to hibernate in. Do you know that there are acres upon acres of land in the U.S. that you will never get to see? You can't get close to those areas you cannot fly over those areas. And if you try, you will be stopped and they will make sure you never try to do so again. I'm pretty certain that if this giant that was described was indeed a real being, then there most definitely should be others. I mean, the artifacts are real. There are ancient weapons, swords, shields, armor, clothing, all giant. So they just made all that stuff for the fun of it, right? And I find this to be weird. We are here to accept dinosaurs, but some suggest the remains of giants. No, no giants. Do you know how big this planet really is? There could be giants out there roaming in straight up open fields and you would never know. They stay in their area, we stay in ours. There's islands that could serve the same purpose. And of course, underground dwellings. The problem is, I can imagine due to some changes, it's getting pretty hot down there. And I could also imagine quite toxic. I think that would definitely drive any flesh and blood creature closer to the surface. Would you not agree? If you watch one of L.A. Marzulli's interviews about this story, there is mention of the Euphrates River and the fallen angels imprisoned there. Revelation 9, 13 through 14 reads, whatever translation you prefer, it basically reads, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And I do not like the sound of that, or some of the other sounds in Revelation for that matter. And this happens after the release of Apollyon. But what does this mean for the area of Kandahar, which is far east of Iran and the Euphrates? But close enough for giants, I guess. You think if an area on the planet was designated to be the site for the release of some demons, then I would assume that land would be sour, unholy, cursed, haunted teeming with spirits of all shapes and sizes. When it comes to Afghanistan, there 
are of course the stories of phantoms, apparitions, ghosts, orbs told by soldiers stationed in that area. When I think about the description given about this giant, if I had to take a guess, this giant would be a descendant of Goliath. Now, David had the red hair, keep that in mind, but Goliath is a descendant of the Gath giant from the Raphaim and humans in the city of Gath in Israel. Let me just read to you these few verses which are very interesting. The second book of Samuel, okay? Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down, and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. And Ishbi bin Ab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass and weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zerurai, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibikai, the Hushethite, slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jereorigan, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defiled Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei and brother of David slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Folks, if there is anything living on the ground or in the cave somewhere, and they breathe air and rely on certain atmospheric conditions to live, if what is occurring on planet Earth continues its course, those things will not be able to stay down there much longer. I'm sure they are outnumbered and outgunned, but just the thought of the idea of having to face such a thing is almost incomprehensible. And if enough people were to experience similar phenomena, that increase in frequency, that would be a game changer. And life as we know it would in fact change forever. Consider that and consider this. We have tons to cover on this subject of giants. Well, it's almost endless the amount. Another question that we might think about is that, is there any of that giant DNA laying dormant in certain individuals? Where does the lineage end? 